Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg, and in today's fun project video, I have a stainless steel blank where I'm going to be doing a four color engraving of this Blue Jay using a MOPA fiber laser system. To get started on this fun and colorful project, there's a couple of things that I've already completed. Starting off with making a materials test card. I use this to find the colors that I'd like for today's project. And my settings are going to be specific for the setup that I have, and I'll cover those right now. The laser machine that I'm using is a MOPA fiber laser machine. This is the GI 30 watt by Monport. If you'd like to know more about this machine, I will have a link in the video description down below. The lens that I'm using has a work area of 150 millimeters squared. And for my test card, I defocused my laser about three to four millimeters. That's one of the key ingredients to getting rich, bold colors. And then lastly, the material itself, this is 304 stainless steel, and I source my material from the same vendor every time, and this is how I get very consistent results. Later on in the video, when I start engraving that blue jay, I will have my run settings up on the screen along with the corresponding color that I'm going to be creating. And if you're running a GI30 by Monport, you should be able to pretty much use those same settings. However, if you have a different lens or a different material, a different laser machine, or even a different wattage, you can use those settings kind of as a starting point to create your own uh, test material card to find the colors that you'd like for your project. Next, we're going to take a look inside Lightburn software to see what I need to do to make this project happen. Now, before I jump into the file with the Blue Jay, because there's a lot of intertwined shapes, it gets complicated oh, pretty quickly. So to break down the concepts, I'm going to show an example, and it's going to make that Blue Jay make a lot more sense. On the screen now, I've got this example, and what I want to illustrate is when we're doing these multicolor engravings, I can't re-engrave a color over something that I've already engraved. Um, it just doesn't turn out. So for this example, we're going to see that I have four smaller boxes, and each of these boxes is on its own layer. And then I have this much larger box off to the side, and eventually what I want to do is have this larger box over these four smaller ones, and I'd like to have the color of the outer box, and then each of these individual boxes, so I want to have five different colors show up for that. And when I move the larger box back over to the side, I'm going to hit the preview button and we're going to see the large box. I have the vertical scan lines for the engraving. And then for the four smaller ones, we're going to see that I have those drawn as a horizontal. And then these random red lines, that is just the white space movement of the laser head uh, moving, but not actually engraving, of course. Now, if I highlight everything and I hit the uh, align to center button here to get those perfectly aligned, if I hit the preview button one more time, we're going to see once I zoom in, I'm engraving over the top of those four smaller boxes. And again, we're not going to get very good results with that. So what I am going to do is I have to make essentially four little windows for these four boxes so that I'm not engraving over the previous engraving layer. So to accomplish this, I'm going to highlight these four smaller boxes and control C to copy, control V to paste those, and I'll get those placed about in the middle, highlight all of those, and again, hit the align button. That looks good. And now I'm going to click the four uh, boxes in the center and I'm going to put those on layer number five, which is the same layer as this outer box. And now once again, when I hit that preview button, we're going to see, look at that, four windows that correspond with our four boxes. 
Uh, one thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to group all of that together. That way I can control A to select everything on my screen. And once again, hit that bullseye alignment button. And now I have everything perfectly aligned on top of one another. And now when I hit the preview button and I zoom in, we're going to see I have the vertical lines from that larger box. And when I really zoom in, here are the horizontal lines from the smaller boxes. And we're going to see that I have some red vertical lines. And again, that's just open space. Those aren't actually being engraved. So if I were to run this project right now, I would have a color for this large outer box. And then these four individual boxes, depending on the settings, of course, I would have different color marking. And this is exactly the concept that I'm looking for when I create this Blue Jay project. I've loaded in one of the project files for this Blue Jay. And before we dig into all the details here, just know that the settings that I, layers that I have off to the side here, don't look at those settings. I have a different file that I'll actually be running for today's project. This file that I'm using is to illustrate how to pull out the different shapes and colors and recombine them in a manner like we just did in that previous box example. When we take a look at what I have drawn out on the screen, we're going to see that I've got this outline drawn and I use that outline to send to my vendor to do the cutout of this Blue Jay. On the inside of that outline is all of the different shapes and details that make up the Blue Jay. Now, all of these are different shapes that for the most part can be pulled out individually. The other thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that whatever layer I have all of this on, that it is not a layer that I'm going to be using for the color engraving because one of the last things we're going to do here is delete this layer. And it's going to make a lot of sense in just a minute or two. When I scroll back and pan down a little bit, we're going to see that I copied this Blue Jay uh, down to the bottom here. And this is what I'm going to use to pluck out all the different shapes for each layer of different color. And for me, this is a pretty complex uh, project and I get confused on what layer is going to have what color on it. So for reference, I made this mock-up of the bird and I'm going to be using three different colors with this mint green is going to be like a mirror-like finish the black portions are going to be black, of course, and then I have a darker blue and then a lighter blue. And this image is something that I go back to quite often. When I switch back over, I'm also going to select this uh, copied blue jay and I'm going to copy it one more time. I'll zoom back just a little bit and place that down below. And I'm going to use that for the next layer for the shapes and colors. So on this first layer, um, it's just a matter of going through and let's say I want to pull out the, the feet that are going to be black. So I click on the feet and I'm going to see that uh, this pulls out the outline of the bird. And when I click on the feet again, uh, it picks out most of the outline, but I also need to hold shift and click on this as well. Now I can pull that off to the side and we're going to see that that pulls that completely away from the bird. And that is why I already have another copy down here. To check out the other things that I needed to pull off of this part of the image that I'd like in black, of course, I can go back to my reference image and I can see that there's some elements here along the back that I'd like black as well. And so I can just start clicking on those. And if I have something like this element of the image, I can just place that off to the side or just entirely delete that out. And then that will give me access to these elements that I want. And I'll pull those off to the side. Now I'll repeat that process until I have all the colors of black that I would like. Now, if I find that there are some areas like the bird's beak that I would like, but uh, those are in two different shapes. One of the things that I found that I can do is I can use the offset command off to the side here. And instead of using a very large offset that we would typically see, I can put something incredibly small. So even though it does have an offset, it's so small that on a project this size, 
our bare eyes won't be able to detect that minute little gap. Once I have all of these elements pulled out that I would like, I can move down to uh, this copy of a copy. And once again, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to make a copy of that blue J for the next color. And then from there, it's just a matter of pulling out the elements that I'd like for the next layered color. I'll repeat this until I have everything that I would like. And when I pan back a little bit, we're gonna to go to the top of the screen here. We're going to see that I've already pulled out all the different colors. I'm gonna move them just a little bit closer and I'm going to just click on one of the internal parts of the bird here to see that that is uh, layer number 25. In fact, I'm just going to move that all the way up to the top so I know that that's where that layer is. Now I left all of these elements in on this design because when I take this and I move it over, now I have something that that shape will snap to and get it perfectly centered. And now I can go back through piece by piece and I know that they're going to be perfectly aligned. I'm going to do this for all the different elements of uh, this project and I'll just keep on placing those over. Now, once I have all of my different layer elements off to the side here placed perfectly on top of the bird, I can go back to that base image that I had. Remember that was on image 25. I can press and hold shift, click that layer. And now when I zoom back a little bit here, I can take all of that and I can move that off to the side. And here we're going to see that just a couple of those shape elements I moved in, they're all lining up perfectly. And I've loaded my production run project file and we're going to see that this Blue Jay takes up most of the space uh, work area of the 150 millimeter square lens that I have installed. So I had to turn it on an angle, but it still fits. We're going to see that all of these layers are going to be the four different colors. We're also going to see that I have this layer zero zero, which is the outline. And that outline corresponds with the shape or the cutout of this Blue Jay. And that is because to get this Blue Jay perfectly aligned, I could use the red contour trace line of the laser. It gets it pretty close, but this is a pretty sizable project. And it does take a little bit of time to get this lined up perfectly. So what I'm going to do is take some black poster board and I'm going to tape that down directly underneath the laser. And I'm actually going to engrave that poster board um, with this outline and then I'm going to have a perfect mark on the poster board and from there I can very easily line the Blue Jay blank up to that. Engraving the outline of my project material onto this black poster board is one of my favorite methods of aligning complex shapes like this to get that perfect and quick alignment. I'm going to be showing you the time lapse of this actually being engraved. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to put up on the screen my settings for my setup to get the four different colors that I'm looking for today's project. From here, all I need to do is cue in some nice music, make sure that I have my safety glasses on, and I'll see you in just a few moments. An hour later and I'm rewarded with this beautiful vibrant color in clean crisp detail. This certainly is one of the more complex projects that I've made on the laser channel. The results though certainly match the effort put into this project. I had a great time sharing today's project with you. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please consider giving this video a like subscribe to the channel or ring that notification bell. Not only is it a great way to help this channel grow, it's an awesome way to connect content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, 
create and share.